Great. So back over to the Norad player's turn. So Frank Einstein has his max number of command points spent, so five have been spent on this character. But we still have five left over. So although we can't give any more orders or spend any more command points on Frank Einstein, what we are able to do is try and draw a better hand for next round. So I'm going to spend one of my command points, and I'll just put it in the middle here, one of my command points in order to draw a new order tile. And hopefully get some better ones. So that's not bad. Three movement and an attack. And that's the end of my turn. The Salamite player still has a lot to do, but both these characters are pretty far. We have Jeff Dealer, who's quite a ways away, and then also Jack Saw. So we're just going to spend some movement to try and get these guys both a little closer. So, uh, having a look at my order tiles here, I have three movement, and I'll use that. So Jeff Dealer, I'm going to engage him. I'll spend two command points on that two movement right there. And again, with movement, if you want, you can spend it one at a time, whereas any other order section, you have to say right away. If you're going to use up to the max, you have to use it immediately. Otherwise, anything you don't spend, if I were to spend one of the three close combat here, the other two available close combats would have been lost. Okay? So only with movement can I go one at a time. In this case, I, I don't have to. I will spend the two immediately. But just know that it's only necessary to do that on the other order sections, not necessarily movement. So here we have two times the four, eight. And here is Jeff Dealers. So some interesting movement here. So we go one, two to flip it, or to open the door, sorry, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight to open this door. Once again, these yellow lines means I can't walk through them. Uh, luckily, I didn't have to. I'm going to come back and I'm going to spend one more command point on this last movement, giving me four more movement. I will go one, two, three, four. And the facing again so that the knife is facing a side of the wall, 45 degree angle. Back over to the Norad player. The only thing he can do is draw a new order tile to hope to get a better hand. So we'll spend one, just throw it in the middle there to grab a new order tile that will hopefully have a lot of movement and a lot of combat. Again, not bad. Three and one. Okay. Now, so three of the characters have been activated and all four need to be activated before I can either reactivate Jeff Dealer. So I'm going to activate Jacksaw and I'm going to attach... I'm going to attach this order tile to him, but I'm only going to use one of the three movement. And the reason for that, or sorry, one of the three available movement, or command points on movement. So my last video cut off, and I only realized after I finished doing the whole scenario. So right here, all I did was activate Jacksaw, and I'm using the rest of my three command points to give him three movement. And so he will move from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to here and again that orientation. Lastly I spent the last move points, I don't remember how they were, but the last command points to draw order tiles. And I ended up having quite a few. I had about this many. And so um, I ended up drawing, yeah, using a command point, drawing a tile, and then the style my player had to pass because they couldn't do anything. And when you pass, um, that's an honest action you can do to your turn. You can do it closer to the start of your turn if you want as well. And uh, all it does is it gives the other player a chance to go again. If they also pass, then the round's done. So it's a bit of a risk. If you want to see what the other player want, is going to do, you can pass. But if they also pass, then you've just ended the round, which might not be something you want. So anyways, I, I used one command point per turn to draw a tile as the Salmite player continued to pass until eventually he passed. Norad player had no command points, so he also passed, and that ended the round. Now when you end the round, so I ended up having seven tiles, I think. It was about how many I had. Seven or eight. Uh, a lot. Had a lot of tiles, and so I discard as many as I want, and then whichever ones I choose to keep, suppose I keep two, I draw back up to five, and that's what happens. So over on the Salmi player, where there were no tiles left, I would get five brand new tiles. Um, or maybe there was, man, maybe there was one left, but the point is, uh, you get to discard as many as you want, and then you refresh up to five. Uh, same with the command points, so even if I had two left over, I wouldn't get 12 on top of these two, I would draw back up to 12, regardless of how many unused or unspent command points I have. Um, in the case of the Norad player, it would be up to 10. Um, and then uh, I'll show you what the next round looks like after, after the setup. Sorry about that, guys.
So the Earth Reborn scenario continues. So after finishing the last round, here's what the new round looks like. Exact same as starting over the game. So you have 5 tiles, 12 command points, and 10 command points. And then here we finally have a discard. So these are accessible. If you give up one of your turns, you can spend 2 command points to buy any one of these. Um, and that can be extremely useful when there's a specific tile you're looking for that you don't have. Um, so starting off with Frank Einstein, so I'm going to engage him right away. Have a look at where he is on the map. We're still exploring here and trying to find baskets. So I'm going to need to move and attack open that door. So I've engaged him. I'm looking for something with both movement and attack. So we'll do, um, we'll do this one here. So I'm going to attach, I need two command points on movement to get where I want to be. So that'll give me ten in the case of Frank Einstein. Oh no, I only need one. I'm sorry. So one command point on movement, that'll be five. One, two, three, four, five. And again, the orientation, 45 degrees with that knife, the combat knife, and it's facing the door dark blue. And the door requires five damage. Jeez, high security. Maybe she's in there. So five damage to break open. I'm going to spend one more command point on close combat. I'm going to see if I can't do that this turn. So my close combat dark blue will give me four. So four dice. Again, had I been able to spend an extra command point on this, any additional command points after the first just give you an extra die. In this case, I can't do that, so I'm rolling four and hoping to get five damage. So pick the odds. We'll see if it's doable. Um, we had these four here, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Coming over here, this door is now destroyed, and because it's not covering anything important, we'll just remove it from the game, because it can't be repaired. It's gone. We'll see if it's the thing. Oh, it's another decoy. Good on you, Salamite player. Okay. So Salamite players are still going, which is good, because hopefully I'll be able to show you close combat. So looking at the board here, Jeff Dealer is so close to, uh, to catching our character here, and um, we're, we're going to see if we can't get him to attack him. So, Jeff Dealer, we are going to engage, turn sideways, and we are also going to attack, attach an order tile. So we want high combat. We're hoping to do some serious damage. So here, one movement, four combat. Real great one. So we're going to take one command point to do our movement, which in Jeff Dealer's case gives us four movement points. Coming over to the board, we're going to go one to move here, we're going to go two to open the door, and then we're going to adjust our facing so that the dark blue arc is facing Frank Einstein. And if you look, we're actually facing Frank Einstein's gray arc, so his weakest point. So this is a really good attack. Um, plus I'm going to get to show you close combat against uh, human players. So we're going to attach four uh, command points. To this combat section. And again, the reason why I'm doing all four and not one at a time is because if you do go one at a time, or you can't go one at a time, I should say, so the extra three here would be lost. So I'm doing all four of these to try and get a super roll. So in Jeff Dealer's case, in the dark blue section, I get two. So that's what the first command point gives me is two dice, and then each one's going to give me an additional one. So three, four, five dice. So I'll grab those five dice, roll those, and then we'll roll for Frank Einstein. I'll roll on the board here so I don't hit anything. So we have two critical hits and then five damage. Before we do anything else, when you're fighting a character, which in this case we are, critical hits are automatic hits. So they're going to go straight through his damage before uh, Frank Einstein even gets to roll his defense. So two automatic damage, which is really, really good. And then we also have five damage remaining. Frank Einstein is being attacked by the back, so he's going to get to roll one die to add to his four defense. Uh, there is one die left, so we'll do this right next to him, and he doesn't get anything. So his defensive total is whatever he rolls plus his shield, so he's at four defense. The critical hits have gone through, so those won't count towards anything, but we still have five points of damage left to assign. So the attacker rolled five. The defense has 4, so all you do is subtract. So 5 minus 4 is 1. So there'll be 1 more damage on Frank Einstein. It's worth noting that had the attacker rolled 3, so had um, Jeff Dealer rolled 3 against Frank Einstein, we would have 3 minus 4. Um, 
However, Frank Einstein cannot do any damage to Jeff Dealer unless he rolls a critical hit, in which case it goes automatically through as a wound. So does that make sense? So the attacker can only do damage um, to the defender unless the defender rolls critical hits. Great, so in this case, three damage is done, which is quite a lot. And uh, that's an example of close combat. So it's, uh, that'll be the end of the Salmite player's turn. We'll come back to Frank Einstein. He's probably getting a bit worried, and here's why. He's got three damage on him, before he fl and he only needs two more before he flips over to a weaker version of himself. And then the other issue, he needs to get to this door here, and his, his way through is blocked. So the only way to get into this room here is where Jeff Dealer is standing, and you can't walk through an enemy character. And this is where the game's really cool, because you, you sort of have to be creative with it. So something that you are able to do, as I said at the start of the scenario, is you can actually break through walls if you can roll 10 damage. And I think we're getting to the desperation where we're going to try and do that, because right now Jeff Dealer's blocking our way. Uh, so we're going to look for something with really high combat. Um, we don't have anything with crazy high combat, so we're going to have to... Oh man, it's not even possible to break through that. Alright, new plan. We're going to try and beat up Jeff Dealer. So let's take this one here, and I'll show you what I'm thinking. We're going to spend one on movement, which will give me my five, and I'm just going to attack Jeff Dealer from behind to try and kill him. One, two, three. So if you look now, we're now Frank Einstein is facing Jeff Dealer's gray side. So let's see how this works. First off, we'll attach two command points to the close combat order section. So the first one will give us our combat value of four dice, and the additional one will be considered striking hard, so that will give us a bonus one. So five dice. So we'll roll those first on the board here. Um. Wow, pretty good roll. So six, eight damage. Now, Jeff Dealer's shield is only three, so this could really hurt him. From behind the white zone, he gets two automatic damage. So what we do here is we add this two value, because we're not going to roll any dice, two to his three shield, putting him at five. I'm going to move this card to over the damage marker. Frank Einstein does eight damage. Jeff Dealer has two plus his three defense, so five defense. So eight minus five, he's going to take three wounds, which again is a lot of wounds. I've played this game, uh, or this scenario, a few times trying to make this video, and it's never gone quite like this. Because the three wounds is the number of hearts he has here, his character is now injured. So we're going to wipe the wounds from his character card and flip them over. If you look, he's just not quite as strong. So his attack's a lot weaker, and he's lost his command point bonus. He's just a lot weaker. He will, however, keep his key card that fell off there. Um, okay. And that'll be it for the NORAD player. I'm actually going to stop the tutorial here, because you guys have seen close combat now. You've seen everything you can do. Uh, you've seen all the conditions. And uh, so that'll, that'll be it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. Um, you know how to reset after turns now. You know how to do movements. You know how to do combats. You know the difference between a combat order section and a movement order section, what the second command point does for each. Um, the one thing I'll clarify is that, so Vasquez is obviously in this room, and the reason why I'm not continuing is because um, Frank Einstein would actually have to kill Jeff Dealer to get through here, because he can't walk through the character. Um, and, yeah, it's just going to be it's just gonna be a long round before Frank Einstein gets to go again, because we're at his max CP. We've used five, and he's only allowed five. Um, so anyway, so yeah, I'll end it there. Um, once, suppose we actually got to Vasquez, though, broke through and saved her. What would happen immediately is we would take her character and uh, replace the token with her character, and she would become immediately uncaptured and immediately accessible for you. So she would have to be engaged immediately next turn uh, because all characters have to be engaged before you start uh, re-engaging the same character. So that's how that would work, and then she would have to escape off the bottom of the board in order for the Norad player to win. Um, also... Worth noting, if she's alive and then you get to the end of a round, she does give a 2 CP bonus. So the Nord player would also be getting 12. Or would be getting 12 command points. And then in this case, because Jeff Dealer flipped over, they would, uh, the, the Salamite players would only be getting 10. Anyways, feel free to ask any questions if you have any. 
that's a sample of Earth Reborn. I hope you enjoy it. It's a great game. And uh, keep on watching. And I'll post the second scenario soon.